Hello there, Tom of All Trades. With uh, it's been a while since I shot a video. I've been busy on the house and uh, life and uh, in general. But on the side, I've been working for several months on this uh, press here and there. This is actually a Bliss Number no. Sixty Two Fly Press that uh, or a Punch Press rather that we acquired several years ago and that I've been working into retrofitting it to run off of hydraulics instead of off of a punch press. A punch press has a big flywheel that um, is spun around by a motor and then when you pull a lever it engages and, and kind of knuckles down and, um, and punches a hole or does whatever operation you have it set up for. I removed the center column that is a screw that you can adjust the um, the distance that this piece would move down and it, and it articulates off of this knuckle. Now for my purposes this knuckle has been preserved because it was a big piece of metal and it has a natural mounting place and I mounted uh, a 5 inch uh, bore 8 inch stroke hydraulic cylinder. Um, I got the plans or I got the ideas off of online and some other research or read a couple books. Uh, there's a lot of books um, on, on uh, hydraulic forging presses. But So I took a synthesis of that data and, and I wanted to retrofit using this particular machine because it's got a ver very robustly built ram and then robustly built uh, ways because it's, it's a, a punch press. So um, what I'll do is I'll walk around the press and then uh, heat some metal up. Right now I have just very basic flat dies, but I'm going to talk about the press and point a couple of its features out and, uh, and then we'll maybe squish some metal at the end of the video. This particular press, like I was saying, there used to be this part would rotate and this knuckle would move the ram of the press down a, a a certain distance. This I, re I retrofitted it to hydraulics keeping as much of the press as I could um, because it has very robust ways with a, an adjustment screw and then I put a brass shim because by the time I cleaned up all the crud and stuff off the press um, I had a lot of play left so I put a piece of brass in there that I can tighten the uh, ways of the press. Um, it's controlled by this Prince log splitter valve. It's a 3000 series Prince. And then I have a hydraulic, uh, I have a pressure gauge here. And then I haven't adjusted it from the factory settings, which I, it's my understanding I could up the pressure or up the, up the uh, force. Down below, this is the on off switch. Um, under here I have a 5 uh, horsepower 220 volt motor. I have a uh, 3 to 11 pump. Um, if we come around here, I have, uh, this is a 20 gallon reservoir. I could have gotten away with a smaller reservoir, but at the time it was back ordered. So I, I just went with a heavier reservoir and it's got 15. Um, gallons of hydraulic fluid in there. I built this nice bench uh, for, for tooling. This is the only other tooling that I've made. Uh, this is a top tool. So the way uh, there's part of the uh, ram of the press had a, a groove in it that I'm using. I can slide this in and this stops it from moving anywhere and then there's some washers. This is just a basic uh, round for, uh, it, it, it's perfectly the size of a votive candle, so I can use that in some of my procedures. Um, I haven't made a lot of tooling. If we swing around to the back, you can see my uh, tooling holder. So this plate that I have is a piece of scrap one and a quarter plate uh, that I use to flatten the tape, to make the table flat. Um, also, I have uh, these two nuts. You can loosen them 
and this gate slides up and then I can slide the bottom tooling out, but it's held rigidly in place and can index with the top tooling without sliding around or shooting up. Um, the press is very heavy. Uh, like I said, it was a Bliss number 62. I put it up on casters to make it a little higher off the ground. And the casters are some heavy duty industrial casters. I can move it down, I can move the press around fairly easily with a pry bar, but it, it's not something that I'm gonna move around every day because of its weight, but I just want to have that ability to move it around without pulling the skid loader in here and moving stuff out of the way. So that's what I, what I did. You can see around on this side, I don't know if you can get in here, is the, the marking uh, Bliss, uh, EB Bliss Company, number 62, Brooklyn, New York, uh, USA, of course. Um, and then we'll come around to the front. You can see these holes were just in the piece of scrap plate that we had. Um, and they serve no purpose, but I don't know. You know, I might be able to retrofit something or they might be of use. So um, what I'm going to do is fire up the forge and uh, or actually before I do that, let me point out the, the control features. So around here, the great thing about it is the H frame rigidity of this press. So I can work metal. I plan on working metal mostly in this way, but it sometimes you may want to come through the side. So the difficult thing is my plans are, if I come from the side, I'll move the thing with this uh, lever. So this, this would make it go down and this would pop it back up. So if I come around the side, I can use that. If I'm around the front, I can use this foot control here. And so that presses down and then I have to come over here and hit it up. But it seems to work fairly well. And uh, what I'd like to do now is put some metal in the forge and uh, we'll heat it up, just some basic like square tubing and press it in the press. I just use one of these. So I have two forges, one's a whisper light that the kids or anybody that I'm teaching blacksmith they use be blacksmithing uses because it's not as uh, critical. Uh, this forge here is a gas forge uh, that I got the design from uh, Ryan Johnson who is a tomahawk maker and he makes uh, tactical tomahawks. I took a class from him at John Campbell and this is the design of uh, forge that he, he uses. It'll do Damascus or pattern welded blades and uh, things like that. So that's why I have it. The size works really well. Uh, once it gets heated up, it stays hot, and it's a good design. So I'll get grab some gloves, throw some pieces of metal in there real quick. I found that these tongs, I, I made them myself. They're kind of a pickup tong. You can pick up odd sized pieces with them, and they're narrow so I can get it in the gate of that forge. So I'll throw a couple pieces of tubular steel in there. and. Uh, a little bit of vibration noise it's kind of loud and I'm working on that isolating the vibration but Round die and make a space 
for a votive candle. This one, I didn't control the heat. If it was really universally heated, you get a nice squish. Um, but uh, the other thing I'd like to try is this. Possibilities. I mean, you get a little bit bigger squish. It's just funny how the metal is uh, plastic, really like plastic when you heat it up. So um, that's the introduction to my forging press. I uh, hope you enjoy this video, and uh, there'll be more videos of tooling that I make for the press to come. Have a good day. This is Tom of All Trades signing off.